entering the ring, Youngstown's very own Ray Boom Boom and City. Good afternoon and welcome to the beautiful Avalon Inn and Resort, home of Ray's Boom Boom Room. I'm Mike Case along with Ray Boom Boom Mancini and Theodore Sachem Wilson, who's our special guest today, right, Boom Boom? That's it. I, 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 Mike, I had to have him on, and I'll explain it to everybody in a few minutes. All right. Uh, why I had to have him on and how why I was so enthralled with him. I'm, I, I've known him for about 10 minutes, <laughs> but I was so enthralled by him when I met him that I said, he's got to be my next guest. <laughs> Sounds good. Ray's Boom Boom Room brought to you by the Avalon Inn and Resort. Do not forget to check out our outstanding summer golf packages. Uh, this place is amazing. There are three golf courses now, and they're growing. And, of course, the Valentine's Day package uh, where you can stay at the beautiful Avalon Inn and uh, be part of the, the romantic package that they have. It's absolutely fantastic. And we're going to go to another golf show this week. We're going to the Toronto Golf Show. We're going to talk golf out there and get more people to come to this beautiful place in Warren. Also, a uh, gas or chair. Uh, put together these wonderful chairs for us located in cool. lovely Liberty, Ohio. And every time you go to a, like a casino or somewhere with those big bar chairs, they're all made by Gas or Chair. You can order Ohio State ones and all sorts of custom chairs. And aren't these great? This yeah. is terrific. I'm Very telling nice. you. Go Very for a nice. few of these at my house. Very, uh, you may not find them here too much longer. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why that white van pulled up. <laughs> those guys are standing outside. All right, tell me why you thought Sachem would be a good guest, and then I got to find out why you're called Sachem too. Okay, okay so go ahead. Well, I uh, over the weekend I was doing uh, a sign bourbon signing mm -hmm. in the Solon uh, Solon Strongville. Okay, and um, was it Solon or Strongville? Solon Strongville. 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 Okay, what's what? Sure. So um, Sachem and his father. Now Sachem is Theodore Wilson the uh third. -huh. Obviously, your father's the second, right? Okay. But I got to tell you, so they were sitting there, and the reason I'm saying it, I, I, I noticed them back, it was, a, it was a line, and people were very kind. I was late. First of all, let me to clarify, specify, and rectify uh, that I was late. Like how late? Well, this is how it went, and I, now I can tell the truth, because <laughs> I told everybody something happened. I'm, I, knew I, had, I knew I had the event. I yeah. knew I had the event, yeah. and I'm sitting on my, I, but I knew it was Saturday, but I couldn't remember what time. Mm -hmm. I wrote down signings, but I didn't write the time, okay. actually. I tell you, you got to remind me of the time. My mind <laughs> works. So I'm sitting down. Having my, I get up a little late. I'm walking around, getting my coffee and toast, watching my sports center. Mm -hmm. Ten after nine. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So these guys, you know, Ray, you don't forget about that. I said, okay, no, no, what time? They sent me the flyer, 9.30. I'm hey, supposed to be in so long. Yeah, yeah, that's over I <laughs> I ain't taken five minutes shower since Hoover was president. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, yeah. get out. I'm, my, um, my wife's grabbing me a cup of coffee for the <laughs> road. I mean, it was, it was like heck. It was craziness. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting in the car, and I'm calling these guys saying, look, man, you got to make an excuse for me. <laughs> it says I'll be there an hour and ten minutes. I'm going to try to make it up on, you know, on the, uh -huh. free, you know, right. on the, the turnpike. Turn right. But we got there an hour late. Mm -hmm. So pushed everything back. When you start off like that, and I apologize profusely, but they were very kind, mm -hmm. and they were waiting, and they went and shopped some more or whatever. And uh, so I pushed everything else back. So I was supposed to be in Strongsville, I believe, from 1 to 3. Mm -hmm. But I got there closer to 1.30, mm -hmm. quarter to 2. And we, we just did it from 2 to 4 yeah. and March going closer to 4.30, almost yeah. 5. So it was lovely. People were lovely. So I seen Sachem and his father standing, very nice, very patient. And I was apologizing to people. I was left right. And I said, I'm, uh, thank you for waiting so much. And they said, well, no, but they got this gentleman over here waiting. And there was a gentleman standing there waiting. I, I actually saw him. I wasn't going to push you, but I just want to tell you guys, because you were very kind. Mm -hmm. And when I, you know, there was one woman walking up and down, like, <laughs> Pacing and oh, you know, she, was, she wasn't too happy or anything. Uh -huh. But later on, there's yeah, always one. Yeah, you want her over. Yeah, but, I'm but right. Yeah. right. Um, so that's how I met Sage and his father, and um, very, very kind people. But the first thing that hit me is when you know when you meet people, shake hands. The sincerity of this young man mm -hmm. staring me, looked at me in the eye. Didn't you know? Mm -hmm. very, how old are you? Uh, I'm 24. 24. Okay. And Wise beyond his years. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Very much. Seriously. Said, no, no. I knew that early on, and I met him. His father was a lovely, lovely man, and you could see he was brought up right, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, uh, Mr. Mancini, I'd like to give you this book. And I got this book, and I could see, wow, you know, it looked briefly too. I said, what could see was like poems or something. And I said, oh, now, nah, written in Latin, quid es veritas, mm -hmm. which uh, I know it is. Uh, <laughs> um, um, uh, what is truth? That's right. That's what is right. truth? That's right. What is truth? Is what you're going here. Yeah. Did you take <laughs> Latin in grade school? Verdad in Spanish or yeah. Italian is, is the truth. Right. 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 So 
Uh, he gave this. He gave this to me, and like I said, when I went home that night, I told my wife, I, 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 and I just read the acknowledgments. And first of all, he goes and he thanks to everyone that helped him with it, mm-hmm. and his father, but he thanks Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior, mm-hmm. which I was so impressed with how dedicated he was as as a man of faith. Mm-hmm. And I said, I gotta have him on. I gotta have him on because not because of his Christian faith only, but because. I talked to him. He's, he plays professional soccer. Right. In Europe for about the last four years. Yes, sir. And four years. Yep. I said, beautiful. And my son's a big soccer fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I know, I know a lot of the players from La Liga, mm-hmm. Serie A, Serie B, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so he would know that I told my son. He was like, wow, Pop, that's great, man. Mm-hmm. So anyhow, that's why I wanted to have him on, Mike. And um, like I said, he's a quali- man of quality. And I could tell that like after a few minutes you could just when people talk to you the sincerity and I and I called last minute I said look it's you know, I called him what two days ago and mm-hmm. I said you know yeah Sunday you know I know it's last minute if you can't do it I understand we'll have you on eventually but he said I don't know so he drove down and you live in the Akron Canton area uh, I, the, uh, we, we live in Cuyahoga Falls just Cuyahoga north Falls. of Akron you mm-hmm. know where Blossom Music Center is yes mm-hmm. yes Cuyahoga oh Falls. okay great, great there you go, you go to, okay great mm-hmm. and so um, what would you think when you pulled up uh, well, first of all, we didn't really know if we were in the right place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was beautiful. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. It is nice. Yeah. So you up grew up in that area? Uh, actually, no. I, we're a military family. Oh. So I, I grew up, I was born in Maryland. Um, we lived in Hawaii for a little bit. I uh, lived in, Ho- <laughs> in Rhode Island. That's, that was kind of the beginning of my childhood. Okay. Moved back to Maryland. And then uh, in 2007, 2006, I... Um, was invited to a tryout for Brad Friedel's Premier Soccer Academies, which was in Ohio. That was the closest one. Mm-hmm. And they had these tryouts all over the world. And um, so I went to this one in Ohio, and, you know, it was just the Lord's will. I, I made the, the first class of 24 from around the world. So I was 12 at that time. And then since I was 12, my parents figured it would be wise to come up with me. So they packed up everything and moved to Ohio with me. And we, I was in Lorraine. That's where the academy was. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, when the, uh, when the recession happened in 08, everything broke down. Mm-hmm. All of our sponsors had to pull out. Apparently, Brad Friedel was paying out of his pocket. He went bankrupt. Now, um, he was the goalie he was on the, goalie. the U.S. Exactly. Olympic team, right? right. And okay. he, he went to uh, Bay, Bay Village, Village. Right. right? Exactly. So, um, yeah, that's how I wound up, wound up in Ohio. And my dad, while I was at PSA, um, he was coaching for CVCA in Cuyahoga Falls. So once that broke down, you know, there was really nowhere else that – that would be a good fit for me than CBCA. You a know, better fit for me. Look how big he is. If you grew up in Youngstown, we would have played football. <laughs> you know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, play anything else? Northeastern Ohio. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sure. Well, but, but you did play football. The did you real, the real football. football. The real football. The football, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Did you play anything else? Uh, at CBCA or anything? At CBCA, I ran track as well. Okay, I see. Um, coming up, I, I was thrown in a lot of different sports, but my main three were, were soccer, track, and I also did martial arts okay. as well. Then you're off to college. Yes, sir. At Liberty. At Liberty University. Which is in yes, Virginia. In Lynchburg, Virginia. Right. Yes, sir. Yep. Play all four years? I did. I, uh, I, I knew what my plan was to go to Europe as soon as possible. Um, Why is that? Because over there, um, you know, guys are really, once you're 18, you're, you're getting old over there in Europe. Seriously? Yeah, mm. it's, uh, mm. it's so ruthless. They, they, every, every team has an academy. And so that's what Bradford was trying to start up over here. Okay. Um, and so seven, eight years old, they're, you know, they're scouting you out and you're signing contracts to be in the academy. And then they bring you up through the ranks. And by 17, 18, they know whether or not it's going to work out for you. So there's a lot of stories of guys who were told they weren't good enough and then they had nothing else. They didn't have a college degree or anything like that. And um, now their career is over at 18 years old. Hmm. So I knew that. Um, so the clock's ticking on the, you. The clock's ticking. But I, if you're strategic, it's possible. So. I'm definitely a very strategic person, so I had to. I had a plan at that time. I have a plan now, but um, I I worked it so that I was getting enough credits in the summers, and I took some AP, AP classes in high school mm. so that I could graduate in three years. Um, but then, you know, just the group of guys, and uh, well, also I had the opportunity to start my master's for free as well because mm. I was still on scholarship. So I stayed that fourth season, and then as soon as that fall was up, I headed over. To Slovenia. To Slovenia, yes, sir. Which is not like a soccer hotbed. No, not at it? all. Actually, you don't see them on TV that often. Uh, no, the first time I'd heard of them was we actually played Slovenia in the World Cup 
in 2010. Uh -huh. And, you know, I was like, who are these guys? You know, because <laughs> they, they were really giving us a hard time. Uh, we came back and tied them in, like, the last minute. And now I – one of my coaches eventually when I was in Slovenia was on that, that team. Oh. And he was like, you know, we were heartbroken. You know, but um, up until I got to Slovenia, I didn't really know what it was about. I was actually the first American ever to play professionally there in any of the leagues. I didn't know that going in, but that's how it turned out. And uh, it was just – it was really orchestrated by God. I have to give him credit because I I played for a, a club called Cleveland United here in Ohio, and Joe Raduca, who's he kind of started the club, he used to coach for the Cleveland City Stars, the indoor team. Um, he was an assistant coach, and so um, one of his players was a guy named Bobo Lucic, who was also from ex Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. And so I called Joe up when my fall season ended at Liberty, my last my last season. And I said, Joe, I'm trying to get overseas, but I don't really know anybody. And he said, well, are you going to be home soon? And I said, yeah. He said, well, one of my friends from Slovenia, he's a coach in the third division there, and he's going to be around. So um, why don't you come to a practice, and he can watch you train, and, and then we can go from there. So I were there. Do you have any doubts that you could do it? Like uh, talent-wise, did you think no. I'm on their level, or what did you think? I, do you have to try out? Well, the, I guess the kind of tryout was – um, that practice with it was with Cleveland United. Bobo just his name his nickname is Bobo. Mm -hmm. um, he just came to to watch. Um, so I was with some American kids, you know, some young kids. But he just wanted to see if I had the first touch. You can kind of tell right away if somebody's got it. Okay. And so, um, yeah, he came to the practice, and uh, I I don't I didn't have any doubt. I've never had any doubts as to whether I could play in Europe. I think a big reason for that is um, I was kind of blessed with the pedigree to an extent mm -hmm. because of being chosen to, to play at PSA. Um, mm -hmm. There's ev everybody landed well who chose to keep playing. Like Will Trapp, for example, he plays, he's been the captain for the Columbus crew, the, the youngest captain in their history. And he's also been the captain for our national team quite a few times. Uh, he was just down the hall for me. You know, Roman Gall, who was my roommate, he's playing professionally in Sweden. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Zlatan Ibrahimovic. But he's playing for Zlatan's old team in Sweden. He's played for the national team a few times. So all of us, everybody landed well who decided to keep going. Is our soccer MLS, is that second rate then? I mean, are the best players want to go to Europe? I, I, I have, so. I personally have strong opinions you think so? about I think this. So, of course. It's like yeah. you want to play in the NBA. You mm -hmm. play in the NBA, you can go to CBA. Yeah. Or you don't go to the same Turkey I guess to play, right? The best way to put it is I was talking to uh, a, a girl that I know who actually went to Walsh. And she plays for Portland in the women's league. And so she said the consensus is that the U.S. has the best league for women. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times um, girls who don't really make it over <laughs> here, they <laughs> head over to Europe um, just to kind of get their feet wet, to get, to get in the game, and then they can head back over here once they have some experience. Um, I, I would say it's kind of flipped for the men's game. We... There's a lot of reasons for this, not because our players aren't good enough. It's the system, and um, unfortunately, a lot of the coaches, we're kinda, we have an arrogant mentality, really an American mentality, which is good in almost every aspect of life. But when it comes to a sport like soccer, a lot of times we don't know what we're talking about. So um, there's been a lot of dreams that have been crushed here stateside, or um, a lot of players who have been told, including me, that they, that they aren't good enough when they absolutely would have been good enough if they – have been encouraged the right way, pointed in the right directions. And you see that when some of us head over there and are successful. Mm -hmm. So um, we definitely, our players are definitely good enough. We're at the same caliber, I would say, in a lot of ways. Um, the difference is that in Europe, the, the kids are already there, and that's mm -hmm. where the best soccer mm -hmm. is. And we're all the way over here across the ocean. So mm -hmm. it's just hard to get there. So what was your experience, your first couple of months or whatever, mm -hmm. your first experience like in Slovenia? For your team, uh, I'm assuming you played for the same team the total time you're there. Uh, or no, you I did not. Around? I actually, I'm, I moved up. I, I played in all three divisions there. Okay. I was blessed to do that, so I kind of climbed the ladder, um, which was my intent. I wanted to start low. That was some of the advice that I was given, because as an American, you want to, you have to earn it over there. Mm. Um, when you go over there, they mm. assume that you're not good. Right, right. You know that you're not technical. Um, they know that we're we're physical, but they assume that we're, we don't have the technical capabilities. So I had to kind of, you know, earn my stripes, and I wanted to do that. I absolutely wanted to start at the bottom and work my way up. So in the third division, you know, um, 
it didn't have all the same resources mm -hmm. as you know the bigger clubs so you know we were like drinking hot tea at you know in between our sprints and stuff like that from like a this big pot you know um after the game everybody's going to the bar to drink because every club has a bar so everybody's sitting down to drink before the game after the game <laughs> everybody you know the, the it's not that th some of those players couldn't have kept going further but they were content where they were at which I is see. okay absolutely okay but it, it definitely changes you know the amount of discipline that you have and um the level uh so th all the guys were very accepting um, all the people were very nice, some amazing people over there, and it's a beautiful country as well. And it was really easy for me to get acclimated. But um, it was also, it was a good place for me to start where I could make mistakes and nobody would know about it. You know, mm -hmm. I could make mistakes and learn and grow and still be successful. Um, and people really only find out about the highlights, you know. Well, the quality of play, uh, obviously, of play over there, you mm -hmm. see, you know, I have my son, he's, he's a soccer fan for years mm -hmm. now and I've gone you know with my kids I never knew about soccer mm -hmm. in America growing here the Northeast Ohio was right. there, right. there football. wasn't much yeah. American football yeah. basketball baseball you yep. play all sports Absolutely. first time I heard about soccer now of course grow up you hear but you never know of it mm -hmm. you know I heard of Pele and stuff right. was when when the New York Cosmos start created a team right. and they signed Georgia Shinaglia mm -hmm. Franz Beckenbauer mm -hmm. and Pele right mm -hmm. and then and they were on TV and, and, and it was it but that that didn't last long though. They mm -hmm. were they were rolling it out in about yeah. you know you know a day and a half. Yeah, yeah. You know, so those guys were over here for enough for lunch. Yeah. And they weren't here long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that was the first time I heard about American soccer, yeah. or, or soccer in America. Mm -hmm. And then you follow. I remember in 1982 when Italy won the World Cup. Right. You know the Roberto Mancini yeah. was yeah. their star. So yeah, right. and that's when I was fighting. So I said, you know, Mancini, my uh, man. Yeah. But. Um, <laughs> So I mean I I fought them when I went to California. Mm -hmm. My children were small. Right. I started playing, and a lot of the guys from England, a lot of the guys yeah. from UK, yeah. their, their children grew up went to school. With my son, right. so they were the coaches. Right. So I'd go and watch because I was always ingrained in everything. My kid, I, you know, baseball I was his coach, basketball I was his coach, but soccer I don't never play soccer. I don't know, and I'm watching. And I didn't understand the game. Right. Why? Why is these guys offside? Why? Is right. he, you know, I couldn't understand all that right. mm -hmm. the things. But you watch. And you see the maneuvering, and you see how they, it, it's, I mean, really, it's very similar to yeah. hockey, yeah. with the hockey, or even basketball, they, how they set plays it's and a, stuff like that. It's a dance in a lot of yeah, ways. It's, yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. And people with good mathematicians, good mm -hmm. math, students that are good at math yeah. do very well yeah. because how they d dissect the they field. They understand right. angles. Yeah. Correct, yeah. correct Mike, exactly. Yeah. So I, I learned it from that, watching my son. And my son, and I told Sage, my son was excellent, and he wanted him to play for like, uh, a young uh, junior Olympic or Olympic team. Yeah. But he was 10, 11, 12 years old. But that's all they do. Yeah. I said, no, I want to play every sport, yeah. right? and he'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. And um, that, that's the thing. But you could see why the Europeans mm -hmm. and the South Americans are so good, because yeah. that's all they do. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. It's 100% a, it's a lifestyle, in some instances a religion. You know, um, Some of these, especially in countries you know, like England or you know some of these places th that is their religion you know yeah. that's all that right. they that's care right. about and right. that can add a lot of pressure but when when you're seven years old and that's all you know yeah, that's right you know it's it's not really that right. much pressure at all how's the slovenian league pay i'm sure people are saying can you even make a living doing that yeah ab you absolutely can um slovenia they've gone through some hard times financially recently as a country uh I, I, about 15 years 15 20 years before i got there the, s the first city I was in, which was called Nova Gorica, w right next to the Italian coast, I could, you know, across the street there was Italy. Mm -hmm. There multiple times I was walking through the woods and then on the other side now all the signs are in Italian, you know. Uh -huh. um, but that used to be called the Las Vegas of Europe. There was casinos on every corner. And, uh, but they went through some financial, financial troubles as a country and um, a lot of the sponsors of the clubs, which were casinos, kind of pulled out. Um, because of some different scandals, there was some embezzlement, I think, from some of the club presidents in the past, and it just it just became tough. So there wasn't a lot of money, but there was enough to live on, absolutely. And um, it was a good place for me to start, the country as a whole, absolutely a good place for me to start. It kept me humble, for sure, um, reminded me I still needed to work, that I hadn't arrived yet, and uh, uh, forever grateful for everybody who was involved in giving me that opportunity, absolutely. You know, Sachem, I... I I was 18 when I left mm -hmm. to New York mm -hmm. to s search for my dreams. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm a firm believer you do it young. Mm -hmm. Uh, you were 20, yes, sir. away from your family right. and friends. I, mean, you're, I was not only in another state, but you're right. in another country. Right. <laughs> um, I'm a firm believer that uh, it travels to raise education, mm. you know. And, and you know, uh, uh, Einstein was once asked of all your teachers, who's your greatest teacher? Mm. He said, experience is my wow. greatest teacher. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the experience you gain from travel and by plane yep. and being away from mom and dad yep. and, and, and the conveniences of home. Mm -hmm. If we know in, in Europe, you could do, you know, rooms, you know, they ain't very big. Yeah, that's and the truth. You're, and you're, you're like walking, you're, you're, in a, you're in a water closet, yeah. you're in the bathroom, yeah. they call it yeah. the water closet. <laughs> yeah. but, and you go, man, this is like, you know, this, this ain't very big. Yeah, absolutely. But, it makes you grow as a young man. It, does. it, it teaches you character. It does. And um, uh, obviously, you're a man of character, and I'm impressed. But that's something I, 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 I'm, I said I always believe that people, when you go away at the right, you know, when you're young, young enough, you have to go then. You have to search for your dreams mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and mm -hmm. people always ask me. I always tell, let's say, people say, have you ever regretted anything you've done? Mm -hmm. I said, no. The only regrets are I have. The only regrets I have are the things I haven't done mm -hmm. or haven't attempted. Mm -hmm. You know, I failed much more than I succeeded yeah. in business, mm -hmm. uh, but I keep taking the shots. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it, it, it only takes one. Mm -hmm. it only takes one. Absolutely. So what I'm saying is, I'm sure it's like that in soccer. You you try for a team. You right. Have, all you need is that one opportunity. Yeah. I well, I heard a uh, actually my senior year at Liberty, there was a, mot a motivational video that I watched. Um, I think his name was Greg Plitt, and he uh, he's recently passed away since since then, but. Um, he, he was talking about Thomas Edison, and Thomas Edison is one of my role models because of his perseverance. Mm -hmm. Also, yes. I, I'm a very analytical person, and um, I'm a pretty straightforward guy, so I, I, I kind of identify with him on some levels. But he said that Thomas Edison, you know, you hear all the figures about, was it a thousand times, was it 10,000 times that he tried and failed? But uh, Greg Plitt said it was a thousand and ninety-three times that he failed and for some reason having that that specific number, number really helped me because yeah. um, if you think about that how many times do you try something like Greg says how many times do you try something 10 times and and keep going you know it's not really a logical thing to do but no. when when you're really obsessed with something when you know that something is possible then you really have no other choice okay. than to continue so I made up my mind uh, at that time before I went over uh, the advice that was also given to me was don't go unless you're willing to not come back until you get a contract. And so I decided until I've until I've been told no a thousand and ninety three times, <laughs> then I'm not going to give That's up. Great I'm you not know, there yet. So. Well, it's funny because you said about Thomas says I've read mm -hmm. that. How many yep. times he failed? Yep. It's astonishing. Yep. I mean, it's really it's almost like unbelievable. Yeah. It's like you go, he failed, yeah. he succeeded, failed, crashed and burnt, you yeah. know, all these things. And you go, man, and the fact that he did finally is unbelievable. Yeah. It's funny you said that. I said when I went to New York, mm -hmm. people I think Mike, I might you might have heard me say this before. I've said people have said to me after I won the title, reporters mm -hmm. would say to me, Yeah, yeah, boom, boom, we know mm -hmm. the story of you and your father, but mm -hmm. uh, did you really ever think you'd become champion? Mm -hmm. I said, Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I used to dream about it. Yeah. I was eight, nine, ten years old. I'd see myself carrying the belt over my head wow. in my dreams. Wow. I said, Now wow. uh, psych uh, psychologists, sports psychologists yeah. have a fancy name called positive mental visualization. Mm -hmm. I said, Heck man, I always uh, I always thought I was just called dreaming. Yeah. And and then one reporter said to me, he said, um, but he said, I get this. I used to get this. Well, if you weren't a fighter, what would you have been? Hmm. I said, I can't answer that. Yeah. I can't mm -hmm. because the there's nothing be. else I wanted to be. Right. I'd like to think I've been successful in something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what. Mm -hmm. And much like you just said, when I went to New York when I was 18, mm -hmm. September 18, 1979, mm -hmm. I remember leaving the Youngstown Airport. I'm bawling like a baby, yeah. man. When I said goodbye to my father, he was working at GF. Huh. Couldn't get off to say goodbye. I was bawling. My mom, my sister, my brother took me to the airport, mm -hmm. and I'm crying like a baby. Yeah. Get on a plane because I knew. I wasn't coming home unless I was successful. Right. I wasn't coming back. I right. was not coming back. And I meant that. Yeah. And so you, you get off, you have so many expectations, but mm -hmm. but 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 uncertainties too. Mm -hmm. You have to play and I'm in New York and this this is the start of the dream. Yeah. You know, but yeah. you don't know uh, I'm, people used to say to me when I get in the ring, yeah. were you afraid? Hmm. I said yes yeah. every time. They yeah. go, you I said, not of my opponent, mm -hmm. of the unknown. Yeah. What could happen? Yeah. You know, so in your mind you go through if I get dropped, how am I yeah. if I get cut, all, the, yeah. all these type of things. But with the unknown of when you go for search for your dream, when you go to a, la a yeah. land like yeah. you went to Slovenia, mm -hmm. I went to New York, which is not Slovenia, mm -hmm. but at least you go to it's the unknown. Yeah. 
that's Absolutely. that's the kind of fear that could Absolutely. and you guys realize most people aren't like you guys right yeah. Yeah. like i'm a giver yeah. upper yeah. i'll try for a little while <laughs> but if it well, ain't working i'm, not, I'm certainly that, not going i would work. never be able to go to another country yeah. where i knew nobody and nobody spoke my language yeah. and they didn't have an olive garden yeah. and you know what i'm saying well, that's real. Honestly, <laughs> i would not be able to do it and honestly you're in some ways you're blessed it's that's the logical thing to do because right. it's it's torment a lot of nights yeah you have not what what else can i do like when on the frustrating nights where there's losses, I remember um, there was, so when I was with the third division club, it was called. Which is the lowest of the divisions. Uh, of the I, one, I two, and three, yeah, of three the, is of lower the, than one. Right, right. okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, had, we had worked our way up. When I got to that club, they were about middle of the table, and we had worked our way up to first, first place, and there were about three games left. Um, and all we had to do was beat this team who we had already beaten 4-1 twice. It's a blowout. It's a blowout. And we were at home as well. And about 20 minutes into the game, there's a penalty kick, and I'm the leading scorer on the team, so um, everybody steps aside and lets me take it. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't put my hand up to take it, but I remember actually praying, all right, God, if you want me to take this PK, just have everybody point to me. So I, stu I st stood up to take it, and um, I missed and we wound up losing. They scored a penalty kick in the 89th minute, the last minute of the game. We lost 1-0. They moved ahead of us in the table, and there was no way to catch them at that point. Hmm. Um, and we weren't promoted um, because I missed that penalty kick. And I remember the, the nights after that, I could not sleep for nights because, you know, I felt, from my perspective, I didn't really know where else I was going to go after that. And now I'm in another country, but I, I can't stay in the third division again, and um, I don't... I don't have any offers coming in. Like that was my big shot. It seemed like at the time, yeah. And it was like, what did I just do? You know, but you have nowhere else to go, so you find a way. There's a, there's a quote from, um, well, Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said uh, that, beware of your thoughts because your thoughts become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits mm -hmm. become your character. And uh, I think, I think because of kind of this, the repetition of these dreams. Um, that, you know, I'm a dreamer of the day, as it's been said. The dreamers of the day are dangerous men. That's T.S. Eliot, mm -hmm. uh, because they can, they can move forward towards their dreams with open eyes. And so because these dreams, like you were saying, they had been playing through my head my whole life, they still are, I, I, I couldn't imagine anything differently. And so, in, in a sense, those thoughts had become my character. That dream had become my character, who I was. And so even though you know, that was one of the 1,093, um, that I knew that there was going to be some way for it to happen because there's no, for me, my perspective is God wouldn't have put this dream in my heart this strongly if it wasn't right. uh, kind of a map, a roadmap of what I was supposed to do with my life. So you know, I, um, it's funny you said that. Yeah, I, uh, I remember, you know, like you said, you, 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 you go away, you, you have these divisions, but, mm -hmm. you know, I thought I was a hip kid until I got to New York. I yeah. said, oh, man, this yeah. is what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, and, and, you know, much like yourself, you know, mm -hmm. I went to parochial school 12 years, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so I, I was based on faith. But you mm -hmm. get to, you find, and you go, you go yeah. on God real quick. You start yeah. calling on your faith real fast. Absolutely. How did you, were you always a man of uh, uh, faith, or mm -hmm. did you somewhere, were you raised that way, obviously, or somewhere along the way? Yeah. You've, but don't get me wrong, I mm -hmm. was too. Mm -hmm. But you know, I used to I always tell people. But sometimes it just clicks. Yeah. Like, it's a moment. Clicks, exactly, right? Mike, yeah. Mike, absolutely. That's what I'm getting to. I used to barter with God. Hmm. I used to, and, yeah. and I used to barter with God. And, yeah. and this, I always tell the story when I speak, I tell the story. There was a play in, in New York hmm. called <laughs> Your Arms Too Short to Box with God. Hmm. It was a play they used to run in, in the, uh, the South. And you know, and and uh, um, Chitlin Circuit. Yeah. They used to call a lot of comedians do the Chitlin yeah. Circuit. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was a lot of the plays do the Chitlin Circuit down mm. south. Your arms to it, and it was a black play. And um, I used to go by the gym, Forty Second Street. It was a big sign. Your arms too short, box cut. I used to look at that guy. God, that's a cool name. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Didn't really understand. Then I understood it. What happened is, what had happened would be like I'd be bartering with God. Hmm. God, if you let me get to this tonight, I pray to God. I, I swear I'll go. You know, I, I never miss mass, you know, hmm. but I'm going to go twice on Saturday <laughs> and Sunday. Yeah, yeah. God, if you allow me to get, just allow me get, you know, get through this tonight, or if mm. you allow me to do this tonight, I'll make it up some other way. Yeah. And until somewhere that God smacks you down, mm -hmm. and I got smacked down uh, throughout my career, and even when I went to California, right. and 
Um, you go through it, and even with my first marriage, yeah. my ego. I always tell people the biggest part of my success has been the biggest part of my failures. Mm. That's my ego. Mm. Ego made me believe I could do the unthinkable. Yeah. Made me believe I could, you know, kid from young can become world champion, yeah. achieve beyond what nobody else thought. But my ego was also said I didn't have to do my diligence when right. it came to business. Right. I didn't have to do mm. uh, uh, to pay, pay my dues as far as business. Um, when it came to relationships, my arrogance, mm. you know, mm. that type of thing, didn't have to. T I was more of a taker than a giver, mm. and um, and you line that up, and then so when you go through, get smacked down enough, you know, and things like oh, man, and then I, that would always come to my mind right. that play. Right. You are too short to box guy wow. because I used to barter a guy. Yeah. Now my faith is the only thing that kept me sane in my mm -hmm. whole my life mm -hmm. through the things I life. I've I've you know I'm, it's funny because um a friend said <laughs> said uh, uh it's actually my ex wife's boyfriend hmm. and he's a good guy real good guy hmm. he said uh, he told he said to my ex wife he said Ray's life's like a Greek like a Greek tragedy. <laughs> That's not. And good. he said, "No, no." And he says, "Like a Greek, like a Greek tragedy." And he meant it sincere. And I went, "Wow, I never thought so." I yeah. guess. And so, so, you know what I'm saying is, I've I come to accept it. You know, you yeah. come to accept the felt highs and lows. So, yeah. and, you know, and and th even now, you know, my my I don't let things deter me because my mm. faith is what keeps me grounded, Absolutely. keeps me based. And, you know, even when the entertainment business, people always say to me, you know, things didn't happen when you want. I said, they haven't happened yet. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. You know, and the, and the thing, you know, and, and my wife will say, Aren't you, don't you get a little discouraged? I said, no, no. Because, mm. no, I don't get discouraged. It's just another shot, another shot, you yeah. know, it's another. But I said, it only takes one. Yeah. It mm -hmm. only takes one. Yeah. Change everything. So that's how I've, you know, gone through my life. But, my faith is what carried me through mm -hmm. in, 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 in my life, you know, through all the eyes low. Because if it, my, my life was a Greek tragedy, mm -hmm. which I, I laugh for, yeah. I don't know, maybe in some people's views it is. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's kept me balanced when I, you know, the highs and lows is my faith. Mm -hmm. And so people of faith, uh, I, I, I'm so admired that you're a young man mm -hmm. and did you, that we've spoken. Um, you know, how did you, how did you shape your faith? How did you, how, how did your shape, faith shape you? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a long story because it's everyday journey, but I'll, I'll give you the, uh, the abridged version. Uh, first of all, I was blessed to be born into a Christian home. My dad, he was a chaplain in the Navy. He Beautiful. served with the Coast Guard, with the Marines. Mm. Um, and so he obviously brought that into our home. My mom was a, is a Christian as well. Um, so that was, that was kind of our foundation, of course. Beautiful. But when you're young, you know, I accepted Christ at an early age. Yeah, but yeah. but you don't, I don't know that I really understood who God was not that I understand yet but I understand more now and at that time kind of like how you used to barter I would I kind of treated him like a vending machine you know I I do this you give me that you know so I would I would work really hard I would do all the right things and I would expect my prayers to be answered and to an extent I, my my perspective on it was just wrong because it was work work based and uh, when I got to PSA actually that's when I got smacked down because uh, I was the only Christian there out of the 24 guys. And, you know, it's 24 guys alone. Boys are going to be boys. That's you right. know, there's all the yeah. things that come with that. Um, I'm not going to go into de detail, mm -hmm. but all the things that come with that uh, I experienced. And so um, I had to really take a look at w w what do I believe and why do I why do I believe it? Not not because my parents said this is what I'm supposed to believe or because this is all I've been exposed to, but is this really what I believe? And so that took me on a journey for those two years that I was there. Um, and I wound up at the conclusion that this is what I believed personally. Um, and when I went to CVCA, it was really confirmed for me because now all of a sudden I'm surrounded by kids who are my age who believe this more than anybody I've ever met besides my parents. And so if it's that real to them, maybe there really is something to this. And I, I came across a quote by C.S. Lewis who said uh, in one of his books that Jesus Christ is either a liar, a lunatic, or he's Lord. Those are the only three options. Either he's a liar, a pathological liar, mm -hmm. uh, he's a lunatic, one of the most insane people ever to walk this earth, or he actually meant everything that he said, and it's all true. You have to deal with that. Those are the only three options. And so when I look, personally, when I look at just things like the sky, you know, when I look at space, I love space. I love um, the idea of adventure. I love even what we have here on this earth from, you know, from our fingerprint to that being the same exact shape and, 
you know, pattern as we find in galaxies, mm -hmm. um, as we find in our ears, as we find in pine cones. Ev mm -hmm. Everything is lined up perfectly. There has to be somebody mm -hmm. who did that. Um, and I believe that that was Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so for me, uh, once I, you know, I obviously that, that continued to grow at Liberty University, which is the biggest Christian university in the world, because um, again, I was experienced to everybody there believe the same thing as me, but passionately. It wasn't just going through the motions. This was their lifestyle. They staked everything on it. And I have friends who have gone from there. I went to Slovenia. One of my friends, she went straight to Israel to be a photojournalist after that. She was there for three years as well. Mm. She was in the trenches, you know, because that's what she believed 100%. In the same way that I did, we just used our gifts and we wound up in different places. Uh, so when I was in Slovenia, for me, it was kind of, well, actually, my internship for Liberty, uh, I studied communications. And so my internship, we kind of, um, we kind of not made it up, but we put it together. It, was, it wasn't one of the options. We put it together, we presented it, and then they, they said, yeah, you can go ahead and do that. So I made contact with a church in Clermont-Ferrand, France, and uh, they, I, I hadn't really made official, official contact until I got on the ground. It was really a step of faith. But uh, I flew to France, and there was a city there in central France, actually right where the Crusades started, which is pretty cool. And I... You know, I went and connected with the pastor, and I kind of studied his speech patterns because my, my concentration was in speech communication. So I studied his speech patterns and, you know, the differences between French culture and mm -hmm. American culture. That was all part of the internship. But I was also able to train with the professional team there for a little bit. And that was kind of my first foray, so to speak, into the professional world of soccer and how I can use, how, how is my faith going to interact now at this level of, of men who um, at this point, the higher up you go, they're being worshiped. You know, they're seen as gods. Some of them see themselves as gods. Mm -hmm. um, every week, everybody's screaming your name. You know, mm -hmm. everybody's singing essentially worship songs to you as you're playing, mm -hmm. you know, and how, how is that gonna interact with what I believe and, and what I have to say? So it was, that was kind of my, my first missions trip, um, if you can call it that. I got to see like, what are these guys like? What are they like off the field? What are they like on the field? Um, what kind of opportunities might I have to, to talk to them about what I believe if they want to hear that? How do I respond if they ask certain questions? So it was a good practice for me. And then uh, eventually I was able to go to the Dominican Republic, kind of do the same thing. And then um, recently I was in Bolivia, but Slovenia was where everything kind of came together and I, ha I put into practice what I had been learning. Um, and so because my, at that point, my faith was strong. It was on a strong foundation. I knew what I believed. I knew why. When I was asked questions by my roommate late at night or mm -hmm. by my teammates after, you know, uh, when I was injured for a little bit and I wasn't playing, and they were asking me, well, how, how come you're still smiling? Or, you know, just questions like that. I was, I was more prepared to answer them, and it was because of some yeah, of my experiences. Well, if you found out, I did when I traveled. Mm -hmm. I, I spent a little time in um, Zagreb, Croatia. Okay. So, uh, there's a lot of atheism yeah. and agno agno oh, agno agnostics. Yep. A lot yep. of agnostics. Mm -hmm. A lot of atheists, a lot of agnostics. Yep. They have no faith. I said, yeah. so I said, so when you die, we think, well, Ray, we, we go into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what you You yeah. just go into the ground and yeah. become dirt. I go, that's what you believe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah. They did not. They never knew. Yeah, what what else? That's they insane. they never been taught. To, very but sad. you know, it is very sad. Mm -hmm. it's very sad. Uh, and and. Um, you know, was it, you know, and I, I used to shake my head. So you get a lot of that in Europe. Mm -hmm. I, I found that when I yeah. my travels, you know. 100%. And, um, uh, but even now in the, in, in the generation of, and that's why I'm so impressed by this young man, uh, to have faith at this, at being so faith-based at your age, mm -hmm. because we're in a world now where right. everything else takes precedence Absolutely. over our faith. Absolutely. You know, whether it's career, you know, culture, mm -hmm. Music, everything, we're, we're, you know, it's, it's against the faith. Everything's yeah. anti Absolutely. faith. A a yeah. Anti, you know, and I have friends of mine, and you know, the old saying, like I used to tell my kids, you, you want to know, you know, you want to know a guy's future, look at the people he hangs out with. Mm. And I used to tell my kids, you know, this guy's friends, he's a nice kid, but unfortunately, he's going to get you jammed yeah. up someday. Yeah. If you hate, well, well, Papa, he's, <laughs> no, he's a nice kid, he yeah. got no, mm -hmm. but he's lost. He's you got no one. Better. Yeah. Just, yeah. And they don't. So yeah. they don't, right. And you try to, and my father should guide me like that, you know, and tell me, and like, give me like my father's fifth grade education, mm. but he's the greatest life teacher I ever had, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And 
So these are the things, the lessons you get, and I try to give my sons. But if at some point I used to push it, and I used to tell, you know, go to church, say, Father, my, my kids, I fight every day. You know, fight when they come to church, and mm. you're yelling and screaming on the way to church, yeah, and yes. then you try to walk it and be, you know, be in and be yeah. uh, reverent. Be, yeah. mm, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm just screaming and yelling. Just, I'm, you, 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 if you talk about you I'm beating you. I'm going to give you a beat when we get over. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it was ridiculous. Yeah. So. <laughs> Those kids, and, my, and then my, my son would say, Bob, you know, I go to church, Bob, but you, you made it miserable for me. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah? So at some point, you stop it's okay. Yeah. When you get old enough, you're going to have to figure it out on your own. That's true. You're going to figure it out on your own. That's true. Because when they were, and um, um, now my son has gone back to it. He went through a very difficult time this past year. Mm. He's, a, and he's an actor, mm -hmm. and he just moved to New York, but, but he went through a very difficult time. Uh, Career-wise, right. stalled. Right. And, and, right. You know, personal. I was away. I moved back to Youngstown, so he was going through a difficult. And we we're very close. And I, you know, and my other son was uh, in college, and mm. my daughter travels quite a bit. Yeah. So, I understood he was getting caught in a rut. Right. But he started going. I said, well, you know, I need some. I'd send him, you know, I sub scripture every morning, I yeah. said, which I still do. Yeah. All my kids, all my kids, send him scripture every morning. Mm. And then he went back to church. But what, what, what? He's finally got back, and he's back doing great. But yeah. part of it, he said, because of his faith. Yeah. He got back to his faith. Yeah. And. It, and, and it strengthened him. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, the, but for young men, I'm so proud of myself. Now he's a little older than you. Right. He, he, you know, he's 27. Okay. But for a young man like yourself, yep. to have that is so imperative. Yeah. And so, like, in today's world, man, yeah. there's a lot going on, man. And, mm. and, 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 you know, we, and, you know, you read about it, and you hear about it, and you mm. see it, you know, whether it's the movies, the music, and the culture, it's, it, it's hard to be. It's hard to be a faith-based man. Yeah. It's hard to be a Christian nowadays, yeah. man. Yeah. Really it's true. Yeah. Really it's true. You have to be surrounded by people who are who are real. Of course. Know? And you got to be. Set the example uh, for you. And, you know, you got to be about faith-based people. Yeah. You know, exactly. I just still I said, Chem, I had a, a friend of mine from Youngstown, who was uh, doing <laughs> local organized crime. Who would have thunk it? Right? Yeah, who would have thunk it? <laughs> like how organized? Yeah. Right? yeah. Pretty darn organized. <laughs> Back in the day, <laughs> was a, and he was a major guy. He was good, but. He's a major guy for a long time, and um, had to, um, you know, smart guy, you know, making mm. a lot of money, but you're very well respected by a lot of people. And then guys were getting, you know, his friends were getting killed, going to jail, getting jammed up, and he turned his life over. He, he, mm. he wanted something, and he came and he turned his life over to Christ, became a Christian, born again Christian, and now, he, you know, he goes and he speaks. He's still the same guy. Yeah. You know, he's a friend because man, he's just a wise guy. That's a crit. No, he's just a wise. You know, no, <laughs> he's not. But he's, he's still a guy. You know, still very much a tough guy it, mentally and emotionally, yeah. spiritually. But he's a, he's a man of Christ. He fights for Christ. Fan, uh, he's a fighter for Christ. Right. And one of the times when I get a little uh, d uh, down or yeah. disoriented, I call him. Yeah. Because I need to hear from him. He's a street guy. Yeah. And he and I need to hear from him. And I like you know, and. Uh, it gets me straightened out, you know, and, and it, it's just the thing is, you know, people all walks of life, you know, mm. people all walks of life, you never know, but they need something in, in they, who they turn to. Right. And I always tell people, if you don't believe in it, but when things go down, God forbid, you know, something happens to our kids, who we say, oh, God. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We don't say, oh, Mike, oh, Mike, <laughs> yeah. oh, Mike. You know, yeah. we ain't say, yeah. we say, you know, oh, God, because who's the first one you call out for? Yeah. There's always, it's always there. Yeah. It's always. No matter how good or how bad. That's right? it. So if you can't, you know, now my kids, right? <laughs> my son said to me, a lot of times he said to me, both my boys, Papa, I don't you know, things ain't happen for me the way I want. Hmm. I said, look, God's a father. Hmm. I said, I'm your father. Hmm. I don't give you things unless you earn it. Right. I said, so if you're going to, you want me to give you, you know, treats and, you know, we're gonna take, give you special uh, uh, allowances and, right. and certain things allowed you to do. Right. You have to earn it. So with work or school work or whatever, you have to earn it. Well, it's the same thing with God the Father. Yeah. You got to earn it. Yeah. You can't be one way. Because I said, I bartered with God. Yeah. I did that. I know who did yeah. So I got smacked down. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and so in a hard way, and I don't want you to have to do that, but you have to earn it. Right. And so I, they get it. They get it. But, you know, and, and I try to let them be on their own. I try to guide them a little bit. Now they're young men. They don't mm. have to hear everything I say. Yeah. That's okay. And I said, I love you. But, man, you, but, but 
still gonna get. I'm never gonna stop being your father. Yeah. But you're gonna have to learn on your own. And some it's, it's tough yeah. lessons. So, right. uh, my my older son is changes. You know, I'm very proud of him. And my younger son is, is coming around. Mm. You know, he's, he's doing the growth. They both moved to New York. Mm. They're both on their on their way. You know, but you just talk to him and try to guide him. And it's it, it's a challenge, man. Because yeah. you know, life Absolutely. in general, Absolutely. The, the challenges that you stay of everyday life. Right. Then personal things that you know, you get like you said, finances aren't what you want them to yeah. be. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, uh, all r personal relationships aren't what you want them to be. Mm -hmm. These are things you gotta f say your prayer and. Yeah. and uh, Say a prayer and have faith and live yeah. your life. Yep. Just live in the being in the moment. You hear that all the time, right? Mm. Be in the moment. Yeah. Now, that's what we have to do. Yeah. Now, Father O'Neill, when I was one of my teachers, Father, most people know Father O'Neill. He was a very good friend of mine, and he was my teacher in high school. Mm. He, when I was a sophomore in high school, the first five minutes, we had to be. Hmm. We were fourteen. 15, be what? Wow. Just be. Yeah. That's yeah. But be what? Just <laughs> be. Just be. Just be in the moment. Just. Nothing, no moving. That's amazing. So we're the, you know you're, when you're 14, 15 year old kids, you're, yeah. you do that for about thirty seconds. It seems like a lifetime. Yeah. I look for them five minutes a day now. Wow. I look for them five minutes wow. to clear that and just to be. Yeah. And you know Eckhart Tolle, <laughs> great philosopher, mm. says that you know he, he talks about if you could look too far in the f in the future and too far behind. Mm. If you look at the past or too far in the future, he says that's ego that does that. Mm. I'm not necessarily understand the thing I agree with everything, but I, I get it. Mm -hmm. Ego wants I I'm, I'm a firm believer you have to have visual visualization, yeah. mental picture of where you want to be, where right. you want and so that's what keeps you driving there. But you but don't say if you look can't move forward if you're looking behind. Yeah. So I try to focus, but being in the moment yeah. without thinking too far, and I, that's hard for me because I'm always thinking ahead. Yeah. My mind races. Yeah. But just be in the moment is yeah. the mo that's 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 tough. But it's it's a beautiful place to yeah, be. That's great advice. You know? and it's uh, you advice. know for especially for someone like you said, well, you know where you want to be yep. as an athlete yep. for your career. Yep. Mm -hmm. we, we all know we want to be with our careers, right? You know, I'm okay. I'm okay. Well, I'm happy where I'm at. But to be happy mm. and, and content where you, and just be, mm. man, that's that's difficult. Yeah, that's the hard. Not part. always not always easy. Absolutely. Tell right. me about the book a little bit. Uh, because it's high, it, yeah. first of all, you got to fill up the book. Yeah, you got to write the book, that's and true. then you put yourself out there now, mm -hmm. and people are going to judge your book. Yeah, that's it's true. It's not easy to do. That's true. Yeah, this book was actually written. It's it's it's. I so call it poems and postulates. Um, like that word postulates. Yeah. I, know. I know you've been waiting. No, that's, for that. <laughs> that's a that's a ninety eight cent word, man. We ain't using it. I, I love it. Not I said, first thing, in my house, poems and postulates. I said, <laughs> that's a deep young like man. That. I did. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, I, what do you I, got like a thesaurus over there <laughs> at your desk? Or? Well, uh, I, I was blessed to uh, a couple of the schools I went to. We were classically trained, so we took a lot of Latin and things right, like yeah, that. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, that helps in situations like this. Of Are these poems in English? How many uh, languages do you, do you speak? I speak two completely fluently. I'm somewhat competent in Slovene, and then that can kind of transfer into Croatian and a little bit of Bosnian and Serbian. I can understand a little bit. Okay. Um, just from my times there, but. Uh, and I can understand Spanish, I can understand Italian, but I speak French and English. Okay, mm -hmm. so you get ready to do, who, was this your idea or did somebody say you know what you ought to do? Well, I actually, I was, uh, I applied for, for the Rhodes Scholarship, and so um, I had, a lot of these are just some of my Facebook posts over time. I, this was published my senior year, so uh, 2015, I believe I published that, right before I left, and um, I, I figured it would probably give me an edge over some of the other applicants to have a book out. So okay. I just I put it together and self-published it on Amazon. And uh, some of the poems, obviously, I hadn't I hadn't put those out on Facebook. Those are just poems I've been keeping to myself. And people had said, you know, maybe you should publish this someday. Or a lot of people would comment on some of my Facebook posts and say, you know, you need to write a book. So I figured, why not kill two birds with one stone? I'll, I'll publish it, get it copywritten. You know. Is there and, a theme? Uh, yeah, the theme is kind of, there, there's an overall, like a macro theme. Um, they're not all intricately connected, but it's kind of just some of my thoughts on, on life. Just little, some of them are two sentences long, some of them are a few pages long. Just thoughts on different areas of life and um, poems on different areas of life. So, If you allow me to. <laughs> you going to read? This one. Some it's, poetry. It's two sentences. Right. <laughs> I read this. I, I couldn't stop reading it. I went. And here's a guy that's how old? Yeah. Uh, at that time, I was... 20. 20. It's yeah. called On Waking Up. <laughs> now, to think this. <laughs> if you wake up in the morning, that alone is proof that there is a God. If not, that is proof as well. 
Think about that, man. You're 20 and you wrote that? You woke up in the morning. You want to know what old people think about waking up? (laughs) Should I pee now? (laughs) Or because then I'm going to be awake when I come back. Or should I just hold it? And then that's what most people think. How are you coming up with this stuff? Uh, I'm a thinker. Yeah. Oh, obviously, you're a deep thinker, my friend. You're a deep thinker. But if you woke up this morning, that alone is proof that there is a God. Hmm. If not, that is proof as well. That's that's deep, bro. No, nothing for nothing. I, I, that's like I, page two. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. When, you name, when you name a book, Quid es Veritas, which is Latin, of course, mm, which right. says, again, this, the book, Quid es Veritas, which is <laughs> what is truth. Yep. And that's, I mean, that's deep. To it. What is truth? Yeah. What is your truth? What, well, what is, I mean, that's. The no, inspiration that's, for the title came from, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen The Passion of the Christ. Yes. Which is completely in Aramaic or in Latin when they're yes. when they're the Jimmy Romans Jimmy Caviezel plays yeah. Christ is a very yeah. good friend of mine. Right? Yeah. Oh really? Oh Jimmy's really? a very good awesome. friend. Of mine. Oh, let's get him on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Around <laughs> Easter. I, I, yeah. I, I, you know, <laughs> I used to see Jimmy in church all the time. We wow. got friends. And Jimmy got he got me to LA. He got basketball scholarship. Wow. He was a baller. Wow. He was a basketball scholarship. Jimmy's about six no four. Way. Is that right? Oh, a handsome son of a gun. Then yeah, he started doing course. modeling. Yeah. The sweet I mean genuinely the sweetest, That's sweetest man. And we got good friends. And he told me, Ray, hey, Ray, I, I got this movie. And it wasn't this movie, it was mm. another movie because he was an inspiring actor. I thought, oh, Jimmy. And, um, and then from that, that led you know, yeah. home to the Passion of Christ, yeah. Christ yeah. which Mel Gibson wrote and directed. Right. You want to talk and about a story? The, the Count of Monte Cristo is one of my favorite movies. And that's, yep. that's his yep. starring role, yep. you know, but yep. I've patterned my life behind that in a lot of ways. That's encouraging Jimmy, in a lot of but ways, he's, but. A very, he's a very strong man of faith. Yeah. So you you love yeah. him. You yeah. love him as a man and as, as, as an actor, but you love him as mm-hmm. a man. Yeah. He's a sweet, sweet guy. Yeah. Just a terrific guy. Yeah. So what did you get the Rhodes Scholarship? I'm going to guess you say uh, no. I was nominated for it. So, um, you know, President Falwell from Liberty, he nominated me for it, but I did, I did not get it, which worked out well, um, actually, in the long term, because I was, what I would have had to do is go to Oxford and study for, for a year or however long. Um, <laughs> Which, if I got that opportunity, I would have taken it. But um, that would have pushed my career back uh, another year or so. Right. And so I had to I, – I was willing to go either way, but it wasn't a loss. It was st- – it's still, you know, a great honor to be nominated sure. for that, for Absolutely. sure. Yeah. And um, yeah. uh, we got a book out of it, so. I know. Uh, yeah. no, Which no, begs the question. Yeah. How many more books will well, there be? Well, the sequel is actually I'm, – I'm working on it right now, Quidus Veritas, Volume 2. Okay. And uh, this one, it'll be – a little Veritas. bit more. Let me say, Veritas. I said, right. That's that's how <laughs> I, I personally. <laughs> that's like a yeah. disease. <laughs> <laughs> right, you got veritas. <laughs> I, I got veritas. There might today. be some in this room. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a, that's a disease that I want. You no. know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've, I'm. That one's going to be a little bit more thought out. Less. Uh, I mean, all of those obviously were thought out. Yeah. But uh, it was kind of spur of the moment to put it together. This one I've been working on for a few few years, and um, it'll now it'll have some of maybe some of the things from papers I'm writing for my master's and things like that. So hopefully hopefully my writing has improved since then, and I'm hoping to publish it in probably the last quarter of this year. What That's do you think over there? Uh, it's, well, You're reading <laughs> it. I mean, no, there's another thing, but it's just a title of poetry, written in com- commemoration of Poetry Month. And this is what it says. There's three, six, nine, 12, 12 lines, right? Mm-hmm. And he's got first one, one, the number – the fourth line, oh, two, and I'm yeah. looking, and those are lines that he, goes, he, he got from mm-hmm. another other poems, yeah, from other poems. Mm-hmm. Number one, Voltaire. <laughs> two, John Don, John Don, John Don, uh, uh, for whom the bell tolls. Oh yeah, yep. uh, Rudyard, Rudyard Kipling, yep. Edgar Guest, yep. Robert Frost. These are all the people that yeah. mm-hmm. he took it from. He's yeah. quoting Robert wow. Frost. I, mean, I, I quote I, Bill Murray I, from Stripes. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, and so do my friends. Yeah, yeah. You guys have Lewis and uh, Edison and I mean, Einstein. I mean, th- this is what I'm saying. Look, this is why I wanted to have. No, tell me again. Sechem means, you said it's an Indian word? Yes, sir. It's Cherokee. 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 Okay. Um, well, and it also applies to a few other tribes, but it means leader. It means leader. And who started calling you that? Uh, or you I've, just call yourself that? No, I did not. As a leader. I, I did not call myself that. <laughs> no, I don't think um, he's, that, he's, not that, <laughs> no, he's not that bold. No, he's not that bold. It's kind of been just my nickname my whole life. In Rhode Island, there's there's some Native American influence. Okay. And so when I was younger, uh, it's, it's my stage name, so to speak, when I'm playing or when I'm, whenever I've been doing any kind of athletics. How'd you get it? How'd you get the name? They, people just started calling me that. People at the Yeah, where? Yeah, I, as long as I can at remember, school? that's just... Uh, at school, on some of my teams, 
you know, that's just what I've always been called. And then when I got to high school, because we had preseason before school started, everybody just introduced everyone else to me as Sachem. Sachem. Me to them as Sachem, yeah. So that that's a lot of pressure. In the school directory, now my name was, you know, officially Sachem and things like that. So, huh. yeah. When I, when I, I said, when I called him, I said, uh, uh, Sachem? <laughs> so, I didn't know how to say it right. Well, you I don't said, speak no, Turkey. No. Yeah. He said, just, said, he said, just think of it, say them. Say Chum. Yeah. Yeah. As a yeah. my man. Yeah. There you go. Totally yeah. and, makes um, sense. Yeah. I am. Um, You're the only person who ever, there's, there might be 10 people who've pronounced it right on the first try, so it's, <laughs> it's no hard feelings at all. But there yeah. was one, one of those people was a substitute teacher in high school, and he went to Sachem High School in New York. No kidding. There's like a Sachem East, West, North. Yeah. So he was like, Sachem? And I said, how did you do that? And he said, oh, I went to that high school. So, yeah. yeah. You know, Sachem, I, I got to say, I got I to say, and I'm sure Mike and anybody here listen to you mm -hmm. say, after listening, you're going to be successful whatever you choose. I right? receive that. Thank because, you. Because you got the right mind, you got the right heart, you got the right spirit. And as long as you got your mind right with God and your heart and spirit God right, you, you. You, you're going to get, you're going to be right. No matter what you choose, you're going to be successful. Mm. And um, I, the world needs more young men like yourself because no, you. I'm going to tell you, man, <laughs> I'm so impressed. No, you, you're, you're, you're what's taking us to the next to the next level, to the next, well, the next been, generation, uh, you know. I've been thinking about, well, for a while now, because my, my dad, as you know, he's he's a big fan of yours, huge uh, fan. He actually grew up in Indiana, but that shows kind of kind of your reach. He was a wrestler, and so he, you know, that one against one mentality. I'm, I fought in Indianapolis twice. Did you? Uh, I okay. actually fought in Indianapolis at, at the uh, Market Square Arena. There we go. Yeah, it was a good place for me. Awesome. Yeah, so coming from you, that you're a champion, yeah. you know, that Thank means you. a lot. And obviously we've had a lot of, big time athletes who were born and bred in Ohio. Oh, absolutely. And I, I've lived here the longest, so I definitely call it home, but um, where, wherever I go, as I wrote in my note to you, Ohio is, is what I, I'll represent and that, that Ohio mentality for sure of not taking a step back. That's no, not what man, we do. Uh, you keep going so, forward. Yeah. Well, you know, you know uh, Mike, I always tell people, I tell people, I said, in life, and that's why I try to tell my daughter, and I teach my kids this, either you move them forward, hmm. you move them back, or you're standing still. Hmm. Two to three ain't good. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Life's all about moving forward, yeah. moving forward. Take, you know, I always said, I think a lot of reason why, look, I, when I was fighting, I came at the right time. The right. town, you know, 77, hmm. Black Monday hit. I turned pro in 79. Yeah. The town was still, they needed something to hold on to. I just happened to be that guy. Hmm. Could have been a lot of anybody. But I think the reason... Me was because my style was very, in, uh, uh, and it was very uh, uh, kind of representative, in, in, in indicative of, of the right, town. Right. Mm -hmm. You right. know, you come forward, take some shots, get right. very, uh, uh, right. and, and, you know, take shots to give shots, and keep moving forward. And mm -hmm. hopefully, at the end of the day, I'm still standing. You're mm -hmm. not, you know, mm -hmm. that type of mm -hmm. mentality, yep. and um, embl very emblematic, mm -hmm. as I was say. And so uh, that's why. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then God was just happened to be me right. at that time. Right. Um, but that's it. I mean, people identify. You, you want to take shots, you keep, but you got to keep moving forward. Absolutely. That's, life, that's like a know? direct quote from yeah. Rocky. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to keep moving forward, you know. Yeah. And uh, oh, did he take it from me? <laughs> probably. Did uh, Sly take it from me? He was a right about that time. Right he about take, the same time. You know, he took a lot of other things. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. teasing. Rocky, so. No. no. <laughs> was there ever a time? I have two questions. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time where you were like, all right, Dad, with the mm. preaching. And yeah. I'm saying this because yeah. he's here. Yeah. Was there ever a time you're like, ah, okay, mm. uh, we believe it. We mm. got it, mm. all right? Mm. Now I don't even know if I want to go this way, Dad. Mm. Yeah. Or anything, would that ever cross your mind? I, I think uh, when it comes to pastor's kids, you, there's only two ways you go. Right. Either, you know, right. Katy Perry or, you know, Billy Graham. Mm. Right. You know, or Franklin Graham, I should say. Mm. So uh, for me, I think a lot of it was just because of uh, – my mom's personality, which I inherited, yeah. of kind of just being willing to listen first. Soaking it in. Yeah, soak it in and then make a decision later. I'm, I'm not, I definitely want to kind of assess what's going on before I make any actions. I definitely think before I act. And so even at a younger age, I think when he was preaching and, you know, I was surrounded by it all the time, I, I wanted to think, you know, what is this really about? Do, do I feel like this, with the little that I know, do I feel like this rings true or not? And over time, it's been tried and tested, and I've now I've just seen too much to not believe what I believe. So I, I I don't think I ever was you know annoyed with my dad or anything that he was saying or feeling overwhelmed. Um, I think I was just soaking it in, and then at the right time, it became what I believed for myself. Do you? All right, here's my last question. 
Give me short term and long term. You're mm. still very young. Yes, sir. You're still in athletics. Right. Short term, tell me what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to pretend like you're not grown up. Okay. What do you want to be when you grow up? When you're mm. our age, what do you want to be doing? Well, we'll start short term. Um, the objective is still the same as I had when I started playing at four. I made a promise to my mom around 13 years old that I was going to be a professional soccer player at the highest levels and that she wasn't going to have to work anymore. So I'm going to keep that promise to her. How first and many levels do you have to go till the highest levels? Well, the how you get, what's your plan to get there? For me, my perspective has actually shifted on what that means. So um, for me, playing at the highest level means being excellent. And I, I have a personal definition of, of what that means for me. But, uh, of course, Aristotle said, you know, you are what you repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act but a habit. And so I want to make sure that, and Pele also had a quote, which shook my life when I heard it, that in order to become a great player, you must first become a great man. Mm, that's right. And so I want to make sure that all my habits off the field are excellent. That's, that's my short-term goal. That's what I'm obsessed with every day. Um, and as that comes into, into focus, as that lines up, what's on the field is, is going to line up as well. Uh, that's inevitable because if I'm the right person off the field, then, you know, that goes into every area of my life. The way that I train, the way that I take care of my body, my discipline, my focus, my consistency. I, I've said before that I think consistency isn't so much a measure of repeatability, but of internal character, internal consistency. So if you're the right person inside, then you're going to always give the same results outside. It's, I, I also yeah, I call it a, a mechanical constant. Mm -hmm. You know, if... If I pick up this bottle and drop it or let go, it's going to fall every time because gravity is gravity. That's the way that the world works. And so in the same way, if I'm the right person, then I'll be the right person on the field. I'll be, if I'm someone who can be trustworthy off the field, then my teammates and my coaches and the fans can trust me on the field. There's no, there's no disparity between the two. So that is, um, that is my short-term goal, to be excellent, to be excellent off, to be excellent on. And everything else will come you know, into play with that naturally. I would say that when I'm older, when I when I'm grown up, or just old, right? <laughs> like us, uh, my my objective is to I want to be a man of honor. I want to die a man of honor. Give me a career. Come on, a give me career. a career. I'm not letting you go until you yeah. tell me something. And if you want to say television broadcast, <laughs> by God, go ahead. Well, I'll definitely continue continue writing. Uh, I think that that is I'm doing it now, and when I'm done playing, I'll just have more time to do it. So, um, you know, prayerfully I'll have enough saved up. Maybe I can go and seek out inspiration, you know, go to different places, maybe travel a bit. Um, but at that point, obviously, first and foremost, my, my family will be the most important. Um, raising my kids right and being there for my wife. But uh, if I have time on the side to continue writing and, you know, make a profit off of that. If I'm wise with my money in this career, I won't have to worry about money again. I'm not at that point yet, of course, but mm -hmm. um, if I get to where I'm trying to go and I'm wise with my money, then I can I can do the things that I like to do and not have to worry about getting paid off of them. So I think I'll continue to write if that's a easier that answer counts. to your question. That counts. Okay. We're counting that? Mm -hmm. This was yeah, a vastly different interview than last week. <laughs> yes. Both were home runs, my friend. Well, I appreciate it, Ben, but these are the type of, I wanted to say to him, this hmm. is the type of show I want to have, hmm. something that's, f f you know, f brain food hmm. I want you know food for the soul right and uh, you certainly gave us that today I, I mean uh, I, I'm, I'm inspired by you um, vice versa. and, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of you now as, <laughs> not only as, a, as, a, as a man well thank you so and much I, and, I appreciate and, that and um, I, I just can't wait to see the good the things that you have in store the good, hmm. good Lord has in store for yeah. you because uh, I'm excited too good things, <laughs> good things you know happen to those who believe yeah and um I you gotta that. believe you're gonna, you know. You gotta believe in the dream. You know, you got the people used to sit when they used to say, "Did you believe? Think it? You got to have the dream. Yeah. The, the dream is yeah. always the ultimate goal." Yeah. And and you know, I, I've I've had people always say to me, you know, you want to ask that you still would you you think you wouldn't be champion? Mm -hmm. And you know, I, it, it's funny when in, you know people what their idea of success is. Right. Right. You know, I just had recently I, uh, had a family member say to me. <laughs> I mean, I was about to go, you think you're successful? What do you think? You, what have you ever done to be successful? Hmm. And I looked at him, 
like, <laughs> or you lost your mind, right? How, how old is this <laughs> person? No, no, uh, oh, enough, right? I don't, <laughs> and they said, well, I mean, outside of boxing, other than boxing, would you think you, I look, I mean, well, I mean, I mean, recently, I, I said, see, that's the problem. Yeah. If it ain't happened in the last 10 minutes, yeah. right. they're not successful. Right. That's, that's so my true. point. For them, success was the last 10 minutes. Yeah. Because whatever accomplished, do you, but when they said to me, do you, what have you ever done that you think you're successful? Hmm. I just, I mean, I, I laugh. I'm not thinking that I'm arrogant, but yeah, just, but I like to think I, I've been accomplished. Things. Right. I'm accomplished. But oh, outside of boxing. Yeah. Which is a and, career, and yeah. you, by you, the way. Right? Yeah. But then you tell them other things I've done. Oh, I mean, recently. <laughs> uh, and yeah. that's that's life. Yeah. Man. That's what people, they're going to constantly take the shots yeah. to knock you down. Pain. And it's, it's the strength of body, mind, and spirit that mm. keeps you standing tall. Well, mm. You can't beat me, man. You can't knock me down. Yeah. You can't break me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't break. And, you know, and um, that's what I teach my, try to teach my children. And, I, and I, I'm proud, I hope I have, because I got sons that are uh, children all that are higher character, mm. like this young man. Mm. That you can you can't break them. You can't break them. They're a character. They have too much character for you. Right. These guys. And, I, right. and I've seen coaches and stuff try to, hmm. try to. Yeah. And I step back because it's a life lesson they've had to learn. Mm -hmm. You know. And I just it's anyhow. But that's life. Yeah. You know. But it's going to happen. Absolutely. And they're going to have to create. They're going to find their way. Absolutely. As you're going to find your way. I had to find my way. Hmm. And Mike, if you have find your way, yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the way. Now on the way. <laughs> How about that? I still haven't ah, found it. Yeah. But I'm always but, looking. Yeah. But I, I, I can't. Uh, and uh, Mike, I can't. Thank you. Did, thank you for leading us today. You did a wonderful. Oh my job. gosh, it no, was a pleasure. Thank you. But since you, I, I'm so so proud to know you, man. And like I said, I've known you for ten minutes, and I'm <laughs> you inspire me. Uh, more it's twenty you minutes know. now. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, I uh, would like to stay in touch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, God willing, uh, have you back in, you know, down yeah. the road. Yeah, 100%. And uh, see where you are at that point with your career and your life. And, yes, sir. And have you back. And, and next time we'll have your father on with you. Cause yeah. I want, hey. like the, I'd like to talk to your father because I've met him. You like want I a said, wealth hey, he of knowledge. A That's yeah. a guy to yeah. talk to. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I really like it. So, yeah. um I mean, I'm a, I, I can't take it now. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Mike, it's I mean, uh, All right. well, are, we take, are we taking this up? Yeah, we'll <laughs> wrap this one up. Okay. <laughs> and then you better come up with somebody good for next week, too, okay? <laughs> well, I get, that's going to be a hard one to beat this I know. One. I could try to get, get an actor or somebody. <laughs> ain't gonna, ain't gonna People are like still this. talking about last week's yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. and now, <laughs> now this guy shows up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we hope... Uh, you enjoyed uh, another Tell them the name of the book one more time. Oh, yes. How do we yes. get the book? Well, uh, it's only available on Amazon, okay. but if you search my name, Theodore Wilson III, and then Quid Est Veritas. Quid so, Est Veritas, yeah. not Veritas. Yeah. Quid Est. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, 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 I know this. Yeah. Quid, uh, Quid Est Veritas, yeah. which means, again, what is truth. What is truth. Yeah. yeah. What is true? I think it's seven bucks. If you have Prime, it's like four or something. So believe me, yeah. it's the best. It's it's <laughs> best seven bucks for the mind you ever gonna do. It is brain food, man. Mm. Trust me, you're gonna read this, and you're gonna your mind's your brain's gonna explode, man. <laughs> you're gonna learn more. You're gonna learn those more words than you thought you knew. <laughs> but uh, remember, it's about poems and postulates. That's right. I love that. <laughs> So anyhow, have a good day, everybody. Thank you so much for in, to coming. Next, join us again for next next week, same time for another round of the Boom Boom Room. And uh, till then, thank uh, take care of each other, love each other. Good night, mm -hmm. God bless.